I said, are you ready? And then you're typing a manifesto over here. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever heard of Charles J. Gateau? I don't feel like you're saying it right, but okay. Charles J. J. Gateau. Gateau. No. Uh, so <clears throat> this was actually recommended. Does he play the Gateau? Oh my god. <laughs> This was actually recommended to us by uh, our Patreon supporter, Rabid, uh, by the username Rabid. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you just stopped talking. <laughs> you just like you were like my Rabid. There's oh, no last there name. There's yeah, no last name. I don't think Rabid's their first name. I don't <laughs> think that's like. I don't think there's there doesn't even be a last I just name. Don't want, I don't want someone listening to be like, oh, is is it me? Wait, is, <laughs> is he talking about? Is he talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> rabid Phillips. <laughs> what do you think, think about it? Rabid Phillips. Did you recommend this? Are you a Patreon supporter? Those are the couple other questions you okay. could ask. All okay. right. Um, all right. No. So this guy Charles J. Coteau, um, he's famous for uh, something uh, notably uh, assassinating the United States president James A. Garfield uh, oh. in 1881, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's the least interesting thing that happened in his life. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> because get this all right. <laughs> 23 years later after he assassinated he ran in the, little, in the Olympic race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, so here's what happened. Okay to this guy. Uh, all right. So he was born uh, in I hope <laughs> 1841 in Freeport, Illinois. Okay. Uh, and uh, do you think they got a sign for him? This is real. Like, do you you don't want to honor him? But like, do you think I get it? So you're just like, hey, we're Freeport, Illinois. We're home of that guy, home of presidential assassin <laughs> Charles Jake. <laughs> I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just like, and like it's like almost like a, it's like a not a memorial, but it's almost like we're like, I mean, yeah, he's from here, you know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So his mother uh, died shortly after his birth uh, and by shortly after his birth. I mean about 14 years after his birth. So <laughs> from <laughs> okay from what the doctor described postpartum psychosis. Oh, uh, which uh, I think is just the way like you remember early psychology. Yeah, and they were like you're depressed because you have a kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's they were kind like, of what it was like you had a kid <laughs> and that messed you up. Yeah, now you're depressed. Yeah, uh, and it was pretty much. Yeah, they pretty much just like psychosis was kind of just the depre the the diagnosis they gave you if like you were kind of sad uh, and it could mean anything um, and she died of it apparently. Um, so I think what really happened is they just didn't understand what happened, but she didn't like take her life or anything. She, no, died, she died of psychosis of postpartum psychosis. Yeah, okay. I, I think what that means is they don't know what happened uh, Yeah, and they were just like put some on there. Yeah, they're like his postpartum psychosis. Yeah, um, and then so a little bit after <laughs> <laughs> here's a joke you can cut out or leave it. I don't care. Uh, yeah, just write COVID 19 on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> Straight going or that's funny. I don't know. Leave it in. It's funny. I, it's some of those jokes make me sound like a conspiracy person, but yeah. I, I'm not. You yeah, know. you're not. You're not. But it's funny to make fun of them as if I am. Oh gosh. Okay, so uh, his father later died um, a couple years later of his mother's postpartum. <laughs> it was contagious. It was contagious. <laughs> so his father died a little while later, and he inherited a thousand dollars, which is worth twenty nine thousand dollars today. Okay, uh, and so he moves. Uh, to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and he goes to the University of Michigan where everyone goes Ann Arbor. 
the University of Michigan uh, and the LA of the Midwest, uh, but he well he he tried to attend uh, the University of Michigan, but he failed the entrance exams uh, oh. because the school he went to um, only taught him French and algebra in high school. <laughs> Two pretty useless things, and so he took the interest exam. He's like, "There's a lot of other stuff on this that I know nothing about." <laughs> uh, and so <laughs> uh, he ends I up long division. <laughs> he's like, "What is long division? I've never uh, heard of this." I only know. He's like, I can solve for x. I can solve this, and and I can say x in French. <laughs> Go also ahead. X. I was gonna say, say it. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> also X. <laughs> uh, and so then, uh, because he failed joining uh, the University of Michigan, he instead joined uh, what a lot of people considered a cult, uh, the <laughs> only the Onietta community uh, in Onietta, you know, <laughs> New York. Okay. I said you know. Nor <laughs> your you you I just, Nork. I just freaking telephone operator to that. I love you Nork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like make one of the make those I heart in Y shirts, but it's I heart Y in <laughs> you Nork. <laughs> you Nork. Uh, here's the thing about this only at a community. The big orange. Um, this was uh, a ridiculous group. Um, uh, of Onietta Onietta. Yeah, okay. so this was a Christian community um, that people call a cult um, <laughs> <laughs> because the founder John Humphrey Noyes, uh, uh, he his goal was he thinks that people uh, here and now are capable of perfection just like Jesus um, and he cool. said we should strive for that. Yeah, and so they got in this community and they set up this community around not sinning um, and which I mean is sounds like yeah, a except, lot of a lot of Christian movements. Yeah, yeah, uh, except for uh, uh, what they what they did instead is one they, of their main phrases was modest is hottest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <coughs> Gosh, that's annoying. Uh, and so, what was interesting about this is a, 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 well, a couple things. There's a couple things that they did mm -hmm. um, in this in this thing. One of them was mutual criticism, um, where uh, a couple times a week they would just get together um, to point out everything that was wrong with each other. Um, so which works, uh, yeah. So essentially, that's what you and I do. <laughs> we just get together and we're like, hey, you know, you kind of suck. Yeah. Do you want to go to lunch after this? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> On me, brother. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, they they would get really intense with their their criticism of each other. Um, of course, of yeah, course, and just kind of rip each other apart. Yeah. Um, so there's no way that can go wrong. <laughs> uh, there was a this other thing that's very seems counter. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem to go in line with the whole you know we're perfect thing. Um, they practiced what was called complex marriage. Um, which essentially meant everybody was married to everybody. Yeah, yeah that makes sense um, to me. Yep. And you just you're married to all of them. The yeah. catch was, um, you couldn't have children unless uh, the <laughs> leader of the cult yep. interviewed you. Yeah. and deemed you of uh, uh, able to parent. It's interesting. I, I I was trying to figure out what I wasn't trying to. I was looking up and kind of reading about like what defines a cult. Because there was a few church groups in the Pacific Northwest that were like kind of culty, yeah, but they just didn't have a leader who, um, I don't want to say dictated, but like yeah. oversaw. Like it, it's usually got that sexual element as far as like yeah. everyone can either sexual freedom mm -hmm. or only these people mm -hmm. can have, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the leader usually oversees that part. Yep, and he, yeah, it's usually you know, there's usually some sort of charismatic leader who kind of twists everything to make him great, you know, but <clears throat> for some reason this article was saying that in order to be defined as a cult it had to involve a sexual element in some way. Huh interesting. I never heard of that, but I don't know if that's accurate. Well, Charles loved the cult leader like he worshiped this cult leader, um, but he was here's, here's the thing about Charles. Charles is that guy. Um, in your friend group who you're kind of like, I wish you weren't here, you know, like you <laughs> yeah, but like not like <laughs> but not like in like a mean way. It's like a like he's the one like <laughs> it's like it's like I'm pointing at Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like he's the guy who like like it took him a second to get it too because he's just watching this on the screen. <laughs> and I'm just over here. I'm pointing at him and like it was like he was like, hmm. oh, hmm. <laughs> 
No, but like it, in like a way where it's like it's like yeah, he's pretty annoying, and you hear him a lot, and you're like ah oh, yeah, he's saying that stuff yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. But it's also in the way where it's like he's hitting on your mom all the time, <laughs> and like he's fighting, he picks fights with you. Like, friends did you like have? you're like, I really don't want to be friends. Char- that's Charles. Charles is the guy where you're like, I you wish know, we were friends. He's hitting on your mom all the time. You know that friend. You know that friend. Yeah, we've that all had that friend. Lot. We've all been there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, golly, is he Charles earned, hitting on people's moms. Uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, well, I don't know. Speaking if hitting of Charles moms, hitting on moms, <laughs> right? Uh, one of our twenty five dollar uh, Patreon supporters is Charles Myers, my dad, who pretty often hits on my mom. Uh, flirts with her a lot. I don't like it, and, uh, but he's a he's a Patreon supporter. So, um, you know, thanks for doing that. Charles uh, supports at twenty five dollars a month, and uh, you know it's pretty awkward because our twenty five dollar patrons get a little like, they get an exclusive mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and Patreon sends that out. Yeah. Uh, and so my my dad got his mug. Yeah. But he got it like last week, and we're mm-hmm. recording this on the twenty fifth or whatever of June. Mm-hmm. Right. So Sunday was Father's Day. He thought that was his Father's Day <laughs> gift. Right. And there was a part of me that was like, I'm not going to tell him. Well, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to let him gift. believe that's his Father's Day gift. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> But he got it. And he was like, "Oh, thanks," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> you know. Anyway, uh, if you're thanks, a Patreon Charles. supporter, there's you know, especially the twenty five dollar level one, we're mentioning you in episodes, but also um, you get exclusive merch, you get insight into the episodes beforehand, and you don't have to listen to an advertisement like this one. Hey, thanks for being here. We've got merchandise. It's a way to support the show and help us do more stuff, buy new equipment, reach more people. Uh, If you like what we're doing and want to help us do that more, uh, please consider doing that. If you want to link to that, all of that's going to be sent to you if you just text Tillin to 66866. I'll tell you, it's not a thing where we're going to text you a lot. We're not. It's not a text service. We're not going to like send you more of the money. It's just a way for you to get a link. Uh, It's one text. That's all we're going to send. I promise you. Charles, because people hated him so much in this group, like he it, Charles J. Gato <coughs> Gato Charles Gato, right. um, and so he spent five years there, and everybody they hated five years him. in the cold. Yeah, he spent five years there. How long do Colts run? I don't know. It just depends on. We should talk more about Colts later. Go okay. ahead. Uh, and so the people hated him so much that lobbyists honestly, and Colts. <coughs> honestly, this is the reason why I wanted to tell you about this guy. The cult. The cult. Gave him the nickname Charles Get Out. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how do we get this message across? And he did, and they gave him that in year two. He stayed around for three more years. Charles Get Out. Uh, here's Charles Get Out. Hey, here's Charles Get Out. Why do you guys call me that? <laughs> That's so funny. So funny, guys. Oh, man. Hey, by the way, your mom hot. <laughs> your mom is so hey, have hot. Have you seen your mom? <laughs> oh, man. Is she around? Is she around? I've been looking for your oh, mom. I just really would love to. I would love to have a complex marriage with your mom. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh, man. Charles Get Out. <laughs> No, uh, so Charles ended up uh, <laughs> leaving uh, the cult after uh, five years there. Yeah, because he after just they didn't gave fit him in. a nickname. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> he, he was, fit in. but he made it seem like it was his decision. You know, <laughs> it was like, it was like you know what, guys, I just got to go on to other things. Yeah. I'm gonna go my own way, and they were like, all right, okay, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thank you. Finally, yeah. So. Uh, so he he left uh, and he said, "Okay, what do I got going for me? I didn't get a college degree. I spent five years in a call. I've got twenty nine grand that I spent all moving to Ann Arbor, Michigan." Uh, and he's like, "Well, what am I gonna do?" He's like, "Oh, I'll be a lawyer in Chicago." So he moves to Chicago. And he becomes sense. a lawyer, and somehow he passes the exam, which is uh, the American dream. I mean, you can really start over. Yeah, so he passes the bar. This man, yeah, who only knows French and algebra, passes the bar. Well, that's all the bar is. <laughs> it's French and algebra. Uh, uh, and it's so French algebra. Uh, he he coincidentally did not have a successful law career. Okay, uh, he only uh, argued one case in court, which we don't have a record of how, of how it went. But I'm gonna bet not great. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's, he's, a, uh, he's like nervous. He's shaking. And he goes, yeah, "Your honor." <laughs> what? This is a French accent. Uh, he's Your not honor. French, yeah. Well, he can only speak French. I don't know. Uh, 
Are you telling me he spoke French with like a southern accent? <laughs> wee oui, wee. <oui. laughs> what are you talking about? He's not French. <laughs> You're telling me that Charles? Yeah, of course he's like, of course he's weird and doesn't fit in with. He, okay, but I imagine not fitting in with cult people. You know, like, like they're already the fringe of society. Where do you go after that? You go to Chicago Law, all right, and then you're up there and you're just like, <laughs> I don't know, uh, Your Honor. Uh, he's nervous. He's like, I, Charles, get out. Uh, good, good, uh, uh, good. I like to picture that he said something really offensive or like something you're not supposed to do in the courtroom. And the judge was like, Charles, get out. And he's like, oh, that's what my friend. He's like, wait, me. were you part of the were you there? Mm. <laughs> uh, and so when that didn't work, <laughs> Charles, get out uh, when that didn't work. He was like, OK, he's like, law didn't really work. He's like, I can get into the business of bill collecting. So he became a bill collector and pretty quickly on he was like, wait a second. He's like, I could go collect this money for people's bills and then just go back to the people who were looking for the bills and tell them they didn't pay. Oh my god. And so he was collecting people's bills and not paying the people back. <coughs> uh, and yeah, he's just stealing. Yeah, yeah. So so he yeah. was doing that's ex- that's exactly that's a pretty old scheme. <laughs> yeah, isn't that what isn't that what tax collectors in Jewish tax collectors did that. It's similar. They would ask for more than oh, okay. was being asked for, and they would keep the excess. They would still pay the Romans because yeah, the Romans, they, yeah, they still the pay Romans back. Really, are when you look at AT and T's business model, they take after <laughs> the Romans. Like the Romans would kill you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, in 1869, still a bill collector, he yeah. marries a librarian named Annie Bunn, who Annie I Bunn? guess just didn't see it. That's the most 60s name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Like I imagine that she's she's living in black and white. Like you know what I'm talking about, Annie Bun. That's straight up a, like a black and white name. A, <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Uh, and so she it, talks like this. I'm little Annie Bun. That's yeah. He's uh, like, well, he's like, well, you are whatever his accent is. We don't know. He's like, well, you are Annie Gido now. So <laughs> Gido. Uh, yeah. So. I, and I don't know how this happened. Like, I guess she just didn't see it. Like, I don't know if like, like everything I read about this guy is that nobody liked him. Everybody was like, this guy's awful, and he was also a crook. And so it's like, I mean, I don't know. But she fell in love with him, and yeah. But I mean, like, you know, Manson had admirers, I guess. But, but I, mean, I mean, that's because you cult, committed crimes. That's different, I guess. I mean, we talked about this. The cult hated him, so it's like, I mean, I don't know. Anyway, maybe she sucked too. You don't know Annie Bun. I guess I she don't sounds know like she didn't. She sounds she like sounds she's so really sweet. sweet. <laughs> you know, she sounds like she is an angel. All we know about her is her name. though. Yeah, she was a librarian. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the bill collectors ended up the the people who needed the bills ended up catching on to what he was doing mm-hmm. and they sent it started sending bill collectors after him, right? And so he's like, I know what I'll do. I'll move to New York I know and this I'll is in the late 1800s. So it's like you I'll move l- out of I'll state move to you Nork. <laughs> you move out of state and you're almost untraceable at this point. Like right. you you disappear off. That's the how state. dad's left. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we'll move to New York. Yeah, for real. Uh, and so while he was in New York, you could like, do that up until probably 2002. <laughs> 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 you could just disappear <laughs> and just be gone forever for real. Yeah, that's actually pretty true. Uh, you can't do that now. You, can't. you have the location of my phone on you, or like you could look up my location yeah, anytime. Yeah, you could never disappear from me. Okay, <laughs> that sounded threatening the way you said it. But go ahead. Uh, I'm not even gonna say bless you. <laughs> okay, thanks. I hope that that's a disease. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he ends up he ends up while he's in New York. He's like, well, I got to do something different. Law yeah. didn't work bill collecting kind of went bad on me. What am I going to get into? And so then he was like politics uh, Makes sense. and so he got into politics. He identified with the Democratic Party uh, and he and this is in what year <clears throat> uh, this is 1872. Okay, uh, so he supports Horace Greeley who was who was a candidate for president um, mm-hmm. and it doesn't go well. He didn't win um, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he's he prepared a speech for Greeley uh, and uh, it didn't like Greeley hated the speech uh, and he was mad at Gateau about it 
Um, and he was convinced that, but uh, 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 I'm having a hard time. Greeley Gateau, Greeley Gateau, the two different people. Gateau was convinced that if Greeley won, Greeley would make Gateau the minister to the nation of Chile for no reason. Like he, no, nothing ever yeah. was told to him. I'm the minister to the nation of Chile's. <laughs> And so he was really, really mad. I'm the U.S. ambassador to Chile's. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, we should uh, go to Chile's after this. You want to go? There? Huh? You want to go to Chile's after this? Kinda, actually. Yeah, one of our it's sponsors. We might as well go. <laughs> Chile's. You've heard of them. <laughs> like, what is that? They, That's the slogan. They don't need you podcast commercials because you know about them. You know them. Chili's. You know the Chili's. You know. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> so uh, he was convinced that he would become yeah, minister. Okay. Yeah. And then when Greeley lost, lost. he was mad at Greeley because yeah, he's, like, he's like, this is like, your you fault. I wrote chance. the speech. <laughs> he's like, if, if you would have just read my the speech, speech. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but the speech had all a bunch of stuff about my opponent's mom and I wasn't going to read yeah. that in front of a bunch of people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, his meanwhile, his marriage to Anne is not going well. Oh, or Annie. Bun. Yeah, is not going well. Um, Annie Bun sounds like and you you make up a little cartoon character. And it's, like, Annie Bun. it's actually pretty accurate. It's really good. Well, they wanted to divorce and they might get Annie Bun. <clears throat> here's the thing. They wanted a divorce, but at the day at that time, you couldn't just get a divorce just because like you had to have like a good reason for it. Yeah, um, and really the only good reason Which now you probably should still have a good reason to get divorced, but you don't legally, legally have to yeah. have one. Um, but back then pretty much the only legal reason you could get a divorce was Is infidelity. If, yeah, uh, so Gato was like, I'll just hire a prostitute and bring her to the court and so he does that uh, and then afterwards he makes well, her testify the court doesn't court. have to see it. <laughs> you know the court doesn't have to like yeah, so he you he, don't go to the court and be like my husband <laughs> cheated on me and the courts like prove it prove it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see him cheat. he's not cheating on you right now. <laughs> She ain't here. She ain't <laughs> here. That's how he talks. She ain't here. I don't see her. Yeah, so uh, so he hires a lady. Yeah, and a uh, lady of you Nork <laughs> to come with him to court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, they get the divorce um, and uh, then Gato is like well, Politics didn't work. Law was boring. Uh, bill collecting was weird. The cult was kind of fun though, and so he's like, "I'll get back into theology." Oh god! And so he writes a book on theology called "The Truth," uh, very well well named, Obviously. which uh, was uh, <laughs> a exact plagiarism from the work <laughs> of Noise, the cult leader. Uh, like he literally just took his book and was like, "This is my book, The Truth." The truth. Well, <laughs> which you could do. You could do. There was no proof of that. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's yeah. no national distribution at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he just stole his book and called it his own book. Did he and get, when did he get caught with that? Uh, well, he became increasingly convinced um, that he was divinely inspired and he called himself the new Paul uh, and he was preaching. He's like, he's like, I'm preaching a new gospel to the world um, when it was really what? He, he just took the, <laughs> the writings of noise, <laughs> uh, but uh, somehow uh, he was able to get like people to just listen to him. And so in 1877, he actually gave a lecture at the congressional church in Washington DC <laughs> from his book, the truth. Uh, and so he had a lot of people kind of like eating out of the palm of his hand for a while. Um, and as he was going down this religious road, okay, he began gaining some more political clout because he was in DC right. and everybody there. Everybody in DC at the time was very religious. And so he was gaining this political clout. And so um, in the 80s, he switched to the political party or the Republican Party and got back into politics to help people in politics, uh, which uh, <laughs> I want to uh, for, for a second highlight this um, because in the late 1800s uh, phones just come out. <laughs> yeah, actually <laughs> phones just came out. You could call someone across what your was town he doing during the Civil War. Phone. I don't know. I, I actually don't see anything in his life about what he did in the Civil War. Probably nothing. Um, he was probably working on his theology manifesto that he stole. Um, yeah. How do you work on that? <laughs> Just every day, you're like uh, copy paste. 
Yeah, that's what he was doing. Copy pasting. <laughs> You're right on his MacBook Air. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, I, I kid you not. So the Republicans. Yeah, don't kid me, please. <laughs> the Republicans at this point they split. The Republican Party was split into two right. factions, right? Right. And I can't make this up. This is the name of the two factions of the Republican Party at this time. Hey, thanks for being here for things I learned last night. Uh, if you want bonus content, early access to episodes, and a whole lot more, including a Discord channel, uh, we have that available to our Patreon supporters. To sign up for that and for more info, uh, text Tillin to six six eight six six. They were the stalwarts and the half breeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is literally like some Harry Potter stuff. I was, just, I, was just, I was trying to do it. You you jumped on it. I was going to be like, yeah, that's the sixth book. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll uh, handle the jokes. He he <laughs> says <laughs> you, just, you just bring this stuff and I'll 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 fill I'll in the other funny. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, I'll try. I'm not funny all the time. <laughs> Our YouTube comments and reviews really are. They'll tell us that we're not. Uh, so he joins speaking the of reviews. I teed oh, you for gosh, it. Gosh, yeah, good, good idea. Cut yeah. this part out where I'm mad at him. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I teed you for well, it. Well, actually a review we want to hi- highlight um, uh, is this review we got that says Jared never edits it out. Yeah, <laughs> we read your podcast reviews, so keep doing that, please. <laughs> and we like them. We like them when they're funny. They make us laugh like that. one. I also like them when they're one star. Those are even funnier <laughs> to me. Don't leave one star <laughs> reviews like don't because that'll hurt us. Yeah, but like I I enjoy the ones that genuinely hate our that show Genuinely hate us. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, but yeah for real uh, reviews for the podcast help us out a lot. So yeah, take please a second. Keep doing that to review it. Who, who left that? Did they leave a name? I don't think so. Actually, I think that one was anonymous. It's actually we have like a hundred and ninety five reviews and it's all meats and grains. <laughs> And then one from my dad. And then one from Charles. <laughs> and it was literally he thought he was texting you. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, hey, is this mug your father's I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my dad was so confused on how to use his phone that he was texting me and accidentally left a podcast review. <laughs> He even hit the number of stars. <laughs> he's like, he's like, this is weird. He's like, I guess this is a five star text message. He's like, I feel good about it. <laughs> five star text. <laughs> Twenty minute wait at Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> You know how we want to start flooding Yelp reviews. <laughs> yeah. I think we should do that. We should take That's pictures and then the captions are all things we would just send as text messages. Send us text messages. <laughs> Golly, that oh, sucks. Uh, so anyway, <sighs> um, yeah, so he he decides to support support the stalwarts the stalwarts uh, and so this time he takes Ulysses S Grant's side okay. um, who beat his the person he sided with last time. He's like a perfect strategy side with the winner this time. And so he writes a, a speech um, for, for Ulysses, S. Ulysses. Grant called Grant against Hancock, oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> which later um, when uh, uh, things didn't go well with Ulysses, he sided with Andrew Garfield and he just took that same speech and just changed everything from in, that said Grant to Garfield Garfield versus <laughs> Garfield <laughs> against Hancock um, and so and the speech starts with ask not because <laughs> <laughs> what the stalwarts can do for you. Yeah, because I mean <laughs> that's all it is. The government's all plagiarism. Yep. Yep. Um, and so uh, what's great about it is uh, I'm pretty sure both of those speeches were given. I'm pretty sure Ulysses S. Grant gave that speech and then Garf Andrew Garfield ended up giving that speech as well and all that changed was just the name Grant to Garfield Interesting. Um, and so Garfield ends up winning. Uh, and now Gato is like sweet. I am the new uh, minister uh, to Chile. <laughs> minister to Chile. <laughs> what was his fascination? Do we know where it came from? I have no idea. Like, there's no explanation. But he. But he didn't get named that. He was just like. Yeah, he was just like I'm yeah. the minister to Chile now. And uh, and and Garfield was like, well, not really. And he's like, but I wrote that speech. 
And he's like, well, I mean, you wrote it for Ulysses and mm-hmm. he gave that speech mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I also gave that. So no, I mean like so I mean minister to Chile. <laughs> Well, yeah, so that's actually really close to what happened. Garfield was like, well, actually pump the brakes, bud. Um, you're not. Uh, we actually don't have one of those. We don't do ministers here in the US. I love that. <laughs> I love that Garfield talks like a startup company in San Francisco. I actually pump the brakes on that. Um, can we so, talk over a game of ping pong? Yeah, <laughs> like you know, like we don't really have like we don't have offices, <laughs> you know, so I, I wouldn't want to fight him out, but maybe we could we could go to the talking corner. Mm hmm. Yeah, so Pump the brakes. <laughs> Pump the brakes there, buddy. Uh, so, so Gato, he realized that the president is too strong to kill with a knife. Uh, that's what he said in, in a quote. Um, and he's like, so because I can't be the representative, I'm going to have to said buy that a gun. to somebody else. That's in a quote. <laughs> yeah, that's a quote. Well, so he's talking to reporters. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he was too strong to kill with. He's a knife. outside and someone's <laughs> like, uh, uh, hey, hey, uh, why, why did you do it? How did you do it? He's like, well, he's too strong to kill with a knife. <laughs> Literally, the quote said, he said, Garfield would have crushed the life out of me with a single blow of his fist. Uh, and so he settled on a pistol uh, instead to try to kill. Him. Who's he talking to? <laughs> I don't know. Some reporter. So he borrows uh, fifteen dollars from his ex-wife's relative. Like I don't know what relative. Like his ex-wife's cousin. He's like, hey, hey can Annie I borrow fifteen bucks? <laughs> hey, what's what's Annie up to? Well, she's making pretzels now, actually. <laughs> Um, and the profits are pretty good. Can I borrow fifteen bucks? Yeah, can I get fifteen yeah. bucks? And so yeah, he borrows fifteen bucks, uh, and he he buys a revolver. Um, which he ended up uh, having to make a choice at the the gun store. Uh, do I want a wooden grip or an ivory grip? Uh, and he told reporters afterwards. He said he selected the ivory grip because he thought it would look better in a museum. Uh, <laughs> what a psychopath! <laughs> so yeah, he selects the ivory gl- grip, um, and he goes and he shoots Andrew Garfield, um, and. Andrew Garfield ended up dying uh, in the hospital, which what's really sad about it is um, modern doctors have looked back at what happened there and they've reviewed the case and they think that Andrew Garfield would have survived if he didn't go seek medical attention because they were their sanitization was just so bad. He ended up getting infection and dying of infection, not of the actual bullet wounds. They think he would have survived if he didn't go to the doctor um, after he got shot. (laughs) So like he would have been better off to just not see the doctor, right? That's why when I got shot, <laughs> I just walked away. I was I'm just like, a doctor. I don't want a doctor for this. Yeah. Um, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. Well, that was actually uh, coincidentally <laughs> when Gato stood on trial for is that for the this. defense? He said I didn't kill him. Yeah, that was his defense. He's like literally a direct quote was what was I didn't kill him. I just shot him. The doctors killed him. <laughs> That's a direct quote. <laughs> I didn't kill him. I just shot him. <laughs> I just shot him. I just shot him with that gun that you're going to put on display, right? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be at a museum, right? So they ended up in Chile. <laughs> in Chile, do I get to go to Chile a for Chilean this? Chilean museum. Here, all I ask is that you hang me in Chile. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> in a museum. <laughs> in a museum. So they ended up convicting him, and they hung him. Yeah. Uh, and the he <laughs> so he goes in uh, to kind of like death row of the day. Right. Um, and while he was in death row, he. Uh, wrote uh, uh, this uh, lengthy poem uh, that he said uh, in the poem. He's like God commanded me to kill Garfield um, and all this like crazy just crazy theory stuff, um, but it was like this epic roses poem. are red <laughs> violets are blue. I bought me a gun because a knife wouldn't do <laughs> God told me to kill Garfield <laughs> God. That last line, man, doesn't really. That fit. isn't really. Mm. But so it, it, he he wrote the lengthy the lengthy poem. Uh, here's the here's the best part about it though. Um, one, he uh, wrote it from the perspective of a child. So um, when he was going to his execution, he recited the poem from memory in the voice of a child. So he was like uh. in a falsetto this whole time reciting this poem uh, <laughs> from the perspective of this child and I don't know like that at all. He wrote the poem to be accompanied by an I'm orchestra a kid <laughs> who's going in like I mean like I would execute that person <laughs> immediately. I wouldn't even let him get to the gallows execute him quicker. Yeah, kill him faster. <laughs> kill- <laughs> oh my gosh, dude like that's terrifying. So yeah, so he's <laughs> He's reciting this poem and he wrote it to be accompanied by an orchestra 
And so he kept asking the guards. He's like, where's he's like, my orchestra? An orchestra please? He's like, where is my and orchestra? Like, You're getting, getting my orchestra <laughs> executed. <laughs> like we're not getting you an orchestra. He's like, I need my orchestra. And so, but then he just kept like powering through and he's like, he's like, this is where the orchestra. I need an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I need an orchestra. <laughs> like that's, that was just part of the poem. <laughs> I need an orchestra. <laughs> Where's my orchestra? <laughs> the powers that be will never. Where is my orchestra? Will never understand the power of Chile. My life is over. <laughs> this would be a lot better if I had an orchestra. And they were like, we're going to. I mean, what do you do with that? I don't know. Is man. anybody was there anybody in the crowd who was like, I think we should get him an orchestra. <laughs> Where was the violins from the Titanic? Where were they at? Yeah, why did they? So why was like, there not someone standing by? <laughs> get this man. I mean, uh, and so in goodness. One of, the, one of the most poetic moments of poetic justice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stupid. Go ahead. Uh, uh, they ended up displaying his uh, revolver at the Smithsonian. Uh, but what I love about it is somewhere along the line, the Smithsonian lost it and they don't know where it is. They just they literally just like how hey, we misplaced that. No, his ghost came and took <laughs> it. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, they misplaced it. <laughs> they lost it. They have no idea where it is. Well, to be fair, <laughs> it's not what killed them. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should have put the doctor on display. <laughs> Here's the doctor who killed Garfield. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's Charles J. Gato or Get Out. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, you're right. That wasn't even the most interesting I part. Know. It's the orchestra for me. <laughs> My goodness. Ooh, I'm not a fan. Yeah, what a crazy man. What a crazy man. Yeah, big fan of him. You know what this episode would be better with? What an orchestra playing, but like a southern orchestra. <laughs> With a French accent, like a French orchestra with a, <laughs> with southern, a southern accent, accent. <laughs> playing fiddles. Play fiddles. Hey, thanks so much for watching Things I Learned Last Night. If you liked that, there are more episodes you can watch, or you can watch some highlights. But please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode in the future.